Hello everyone, and welcome to Power Apps Portals Tips. My name is Nicholas Hayduke, and this is tip number 100. Filtering rows exported by the Configuration Migration Tool using Fetch XML. In tip number 98, I provided a high-level overview of using the Configuration Migration Tool for Power Apps Portals ALM. In this tip, I'll go into more details on using Fetch XML to define which rows are included in your export-import process. In December 2019, Microsoft released an update for the tool that allows you to apply a Fetch XML filter to the rows that are included as part of the export. This greatly simplified the process of achieving a streamlined Power Apps Portals ALM process, specifically because of the way that web files work. While web files have their own custom table, the actual files themselves are stored as notes in Dataverse. This means that in order to properly move web files between environments, you need to include both the web file table and the notes table, also known as annotations. Since notes are used for many different purposes in Dataverse, including all the notes as part of the Power Apps Portal's ALM process is not desirable. There's more than likely many notes in the source environment that you do not want to move into the destination environment. However, before this new feature was added, the only option was to process the zip file after it was exported to remove the unwanted rows. Now you can include a fetch XML filter in your schema file to only include notes related to web files. In tip number 99, I mentioned that I prefer to only include rows that I've modified in my export import process. This can be achieved with the fetch XML filtering. There are a few different ways that you can approach this. One way is to include filtering based on the modified on and modified by user. Another way is to specifically craft your fetch XML to look for rows with specific names. Another technique is to use a naming convention to identify rows that you've changed. I prefer to use a combination of these last two. For out of the box rows where I can't change the name, like for example content snippets or site settings, I'll include an or statement in my fetch XML that targets the specific names of the rows I've modified. For new rows that I've created, like entity lists, entity forms, or web templates, I like to use a naming convention that starts with a customer-specific prefix, and then my fetch XML query can use a wildcard query to include all of those rows. With your fetch XML defined for the tables in your configuration migration tool schema file, your export file will be smaller, and your export import process will run faster. Thanks for watching. And I hope you found the Power Apps Portals tip number 100 on filtering rows exported by the configuration migration tool using Fetch XML useful.